A meditation on the indissolubility of marriage based on the thoughts of Saints Richard of St. Victor, Bonaventure, Arndt, and Gerhard. What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. The Holy Ghost did not waste words when he brought the inspired verse, The two shall become one flesh. What has been joined together on its own may be separable, but what has become one may not. Sarah was given in marriage seven times before Tobias, each time with death on the first night. Seven deaths, seven being the number of God in creation, and one final marriage with holy life. It may have remained a mystery to Tobias and Sarah why this suffering happened, but we have the perfect unfolding of the mystery in the New Testament. This was a prefigurement of the perfect working of God in creation that was to come. Christ, as God and man, came and died perfectly for all creation, consummating his marriage to the church. God took something that takes life, death, and transformed it into something that makes life, marriage. For seven days there is creation, but the eighth is eternity. And though Sarah had seven marriages and deaths, the eighth to Tobias proved indissoluble. In marriage, the wedded members participate in this unbreakable union, an indissoluble knot, For God will never break his union with our souls, as we may never be snatched out of his hand, nor will Christ allow his marriage to be dissolved, as the gates of hell shall not prevail against his church. Before the fall, marriage was a symbol of God's union to the soul, but after it is a symbol of Christ's union to his church, the former being the shadow and type, the latter the form and fulfillment. For this reason, in the union of man to woman, Christ remains central. These members participate in the virtue that binds all together, love. This union in love that God has made is shared not only between the husband and wife, but also between the wedded couple and Christ, and as Solomon writes, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. It is necessary that those who are supremely loved seek with the same desire someone else to be included in their love and seek to possess him in absolute concord, according to that very desire of theirs. The wedded couple's love is perfected because of the love of Christ being joined as a third. It is this same perfected love that exemplifies most perfectly the triunity in the Godhead. For not only is there reciprocal love of Father and Son, but also there is the shared love with the Spirit. With this most perfect union in mind, God has designed marriage. The wedded run their race together, for God has united them in perfect love, and what he joins cannot be broken. O that primal bond of Eden! the very good completion of man. O the union of hands, the symbol of two natures joined to one. O the threefold love, the mystery that receives threefold graces. O the heavenly seal that transcends all human thought. O the bestowed covenant, the perfect union for man. Yet in this great perfection of God's design, O how the holy bond of matrimony is trampled upon and profaned. How holy and defiled we have made it with the spots of the flesh, and what a multitude of views and impurities now shelter themselves under the sacred name of matrimony. God designed the union as a token and seal of Christ in the church, yet it has been made a token of pride. The nearer the wedded draw to one another, the more fervent must be their zeal and prayer. Yet now the wedded draw ever closer toward the weakening of this union. The more intruded and subject the wedded are to dangers and calamities, the more conjoined their minds must be in piety and prayer, yet now the wedded draw ever more toward dissolution and trouble. What holier vow can man make than this golden thread in life, the bond that none may dare to break that bindeth man and wife, which blessed by God what e'er betides no evil shall destroy, through careworn days each care divides and doubles every joy.